All right, what we're going to talk about in this video is blood lactate level. And we've already talked about the fact that we produce lactic acid in our muscle cells, and that lactic acid ends up in your bloodstream. Okay. So we produce lactic acid. Okay. At the same time, we remove lactic acid and we send it to other cells in the body. We could send it to the heart, to the kidney, to the liver, um, all the other cells can take up that lactic acid. So at the same time that we're producing lactic acid, we are clearing it or removing it. And the lactate levels in our blood stay fairly steady at rest or with low intensity exercise. Okay? And it's not because we're not producing it, it's just because we're producing it at the same rate that we're clearing it, so the amount in the blood stays fairly steady. Okay. Lactate threshold is a point when blood lactate begins to accumulate in the blood, and this happens during exercise in which the intensity is increasing. So um, again, as we said before, at rest or low intensity exercise, we don't get an accumulation of lactate because production equals clearance. Okay. But eventually, if you start to exercise and you increase the intensity, eventually you will get lactate accumulation. So this is what it looks like. So on the x-axis we have speed, which is also intensity. So as we move to the right, we're increasing the intensity of the exercise. And here on the y-axis we have blood lactate concentration. And you can see that here at the lower intensities, blood lactate level stays fairly steady. Okay? Even though the intensity is increasing, and you know that as you increase intensity, you're going to produce more lactic acid. but you're also going to clear more lactic acid. And so as long as production and clearance are equal, it's going to stay pretty steady. However, if you keep increasing the exercise intensity, you're going to reach a point, which we call lactate threshold, where you cannot maintain that homeostatic resting level anymore and lactate levels in the blood begin to accumulate. Okay? So they begin to rise. So what's happening here? Why are they rising? So basically what's happening is that the production is greater than clearance, either because production is increasing or because clearance is decreasing. The reality is that as intensity increases, it's probably both. You know that you're going to produce more lactate as the intensity increases, and it's going to become more and more difficult to clear it as the intensity increases. And therefore, lactate concentration in the blood is going to rise. Okay? And this is a problem, because as lactate accumulates, lactic acid gives off hydrogen ions. So we get a rise in hydrogen ion concentration, which causes a drop in pH. This causes an acidic environment, and the acidic environment can lead to fatigue. Let's talk a little bit more about this, although we are going to talk about it more at the end of this chapter. So when we drop our pH, few things happen. PFK slows down, glycogenolysis slows down, and calcium is displaced from troponin. All of these things are going to cause fatigue. They're going to cause you to slow down. If PFK slows down, glycolysis slows down. 
And so the rate that you're producing ATP is going to slow down. If glycogenolysis slows down, then the rate that you're supplying glucose to glycogenolysis is going to slow down. Therefore, you're going to produce slower ATP. That's going to slow you down. And if we have some calcium displaced from troponin, that's going to prevent some contraction. So all of these things result in fatigue. So lactate threshold's not a good thing when we're talking about performance. So when this individual is on the treadmill, 4 kilometers, 6 kilometers, 8, 10, they're fine. And if they were to continue um, jogging at 10 kilometers per hour for an hour, they probably could keep going because the lactate levels in the blood would not accumulate unless something else caused fatigue along the way. But if you put this person on the treadmill at 14 kilometers per hour, you can see that they're going to have pretty high lactate levels. Okay, Resting lactate is around 2. At 14 kilometers per hour, you've got a lactate level more than double your resting level. That's very high. Okay, And so this is going to cause an increase in hydrogen ions, a decrease in pH, and it's going to slow you down and cause you to fatigue. So this person is not going to be able to maintain 14 kilometers for very long. So lactate threshold is usually expressed as a percentage of VO2 max. Um, the way we would calculate it is you would have to know somebody's VO2 max. So in this case, the person's VO2 max was 50 milliliters per kilogram body weight per minute and we determined that their lactate threshold occurred at 25 mLs per kg per minute. And 25 divided by 50 is 0 0.50 which is the same as 50 percent. Okay. So if the person has a VO2 max of 50 and their lactate threshold occurred at 25, then their lactate threshold is 50% of their VO2 max. So that's how we express it as a percentage of VO2 max. Average untrained values are usually about 50 to 60%. Trained endurance athletes go up as high as 70 to 80%. And um, elite endurance athletes, we see them go even higher, even up to 85, 90% of their VO2 max, which is really high. So lactate threshold is a very useful piece of information for us because it gives us the information about the highest intensity you can achieve without accumulating lactic acid. And what this tells us is the highest intensity you would be able to maintain for a prolonged period of time. Okay, because as long as you're not accumul accumulating lactic acid, you should be able to do that activity for a long time. And we can use lactate threshold to predict someone's performance. We can use it to choose how fast you should run in a race. And we can use it to choose how fast you should run in your training. And we'll, we'll come back to that. But let me just give you an example. So here we have um, two people, individual A, individual B, okay? Or it could be the same individual before and after training. But either way, A is trained, B is untrained. Okay? A is the blue line, B is the red line. And if you look carefully at these two graphs, they're basically showing you the same thing. Here the x-axis is percentage of VO2 max, 
and here the x-axis is treadmill speed. So either way, the x-axis is intensity, the y-axis is lactate concentration. All right, so for the trained individual, we see that they reach their lactate threshold at about 75% of their VO2 max, okay, which corresponds to about 11.8 kilometers per hour. If we look, and that's the trained, okay, if we look at the untrained individual, okay, here, they reach their lactate threshold at about 58% of their VO2 max, and which corresponds to about eight and a half kilometers per hour on the treadmill. So think of it this way. If these two people were in a race, okay, and person B was trying to keep up with person A, okay, so here's B, here's A. So A is running 11.8 kilometers per hour, B is trying to keep up. So at 11 kilometers per hour, 11.8 kilometers per hour, B would have a lactate level of 6. That's a very high lactate level. Therefore, if this untrained individual tries to run 11.8 kilometers per hour, they're not going to be able to do it very long because the lactate level is going to rise, the hydrogen ion concentration is going to rise, the pH is going to drop, and this is going to cause fatigue. And we'll talk about more about fatigue later in this chapter. But basically, everything in your body works in an optimal environment. And when the pH is too low, the PFK slows down, glycogenolysis slows down, and some of that calcium can't bind to the troponin. So all of these things are going to cause you to slow down. So as far as predicting who would win a race, if you had this type of data on these two individuals, it would be very clear that individual A would be able to run much faster for a prolonged period of time. So I put my money on A. Now, um, as far as choosing your pace if you're going to run. So now if you're the coach for this individual, and you want them to run the race as fast as they can, but you also want them to be able to complete the race, you would tell them to run at 8 kilometers per hour. 8 and a half. Because you know that at 8 and a half kilometers per hour, they're not accumulating lactic acid yet. Okay, It's just the beginning of their lactate threshold. Anything beyond 8.5, they're going to start to accumulate. But as long as you keep them at 8.5, they're not going to accumulate. That's the fastest rate, that's the fastest speed that they're going to be able to maintain for a prolonged period of time. So that's the race pace for that individual. On the other hand, for this person A, you would tell them that they could run 11.8, uh, okay, because they have a lactate threshold that occur, occurs at a much higher um, intensity so they can run at a much faster speed and they can maintain that for a prolonged period of time. As far as training, uh, what you would want to do is you would want these individuals to train above their lactate threshold. So for training, you would want this person to run faster than 8.5 kilometers per hour. Okay, because if you want the systems that are removing lactic acid and the systems that are resulting in the production of lactic acid to improve, you have to overload them. Okay. And so you want to train them above their lactate threshold. You want to force them in training to accumulate lactate threshold and for the body to get used to dealing with that accumulated lactate. And over time, 
the aerobic systems are going to become faster, they're going to take up pyruvate at a greater rate, and you're going to produce less lactic acid, and you're also going to be able to clear it better. And we'll talk about that later in the chapter, but basically you're going to get better blood flow to the muscle cells to clear that lactic acid and get rid of it. So with training, what we see is an increase in lactate threshold. So lactate threshold occurs at a greater intensity, a greater percentage of your VO2 max, and a, and a greater overall intensity. So you can do more work, a greater amount of work, before you accumulate lactic acid. And that's because of two basic ad adaptations when you overload, the body over time is going to reduce lactic acid production okay, by taking up more of that pyruvate into the mitochondria, and you're also going to be able to increase lactic acid clearance. Okay, And like I said, that's going to occur through blood flow. One of the adaptations that you'll see throughout the semester is that with training, the muscle cells get more blood flow. And if there's more blood flow going through the cells, that's going to help to clear that lactic acid out. So if lactate production is lower, lactate clearance is higher, you're able to maintain that steady level for longer, for higher intensities. And therefore, lactate threshold is going to occur at a much higher intensity.